Hello everybody, I am back from BEA, as you see, back in my space and with my cat, who's actually walking around this way right now. There he is, here's Percy. Uh, I have a lot to share with you today, books and tote bags and clothing. So, first, since it's kind of warm in here, uh, I did get this hoodie at BEA. Um, clothing was a new thing to get there. Um, the kicker is, though, <laughs> turn around. You'll see that this is a Mortal Instruments hoodie, uh, which I am not really a big supporter of Cassandra Clare, but this hoodie is really comfortable. So it is for home wearing only. This is the only promotion this hoodie is getting, aside from when I wore it through the airport because I had no other jacket, but we'll not talk about that. Um, so I got that, and also I got a lotion t-shirt. So I got two items of clothing at BEA. And a raid behind me, you can see the tote bags that I got. So I got an Epic Reads tote bag and then a Totes Books tote bag, which was one of the most popular tote bags at EA. Quirk Books had this one. And then Random House had Choose Kind um, for Wonder by RJ Palacio. And then Ashat was giving up Underwater Puppies totes bag, tote bags, totes bags. <laughs> Uh, so then, and then there's, for Deep Blue, Disney was giving out, it's a, it like unfolds into a towel. I'm not going to unfold it because I'll never get it back into that formation. But, and then this was the other most popular tote bag, uh, Capstone, which is a children's book publisher, was giving this out. Read a book, live happily ever after. Love it. And then Ran, or Harlequin, who always has wonderful tote bags, had I like big books and I cannot lie. And then um, Liverite had a tote bag. Uh, it has a quote by Ever by um, Ezra Pound. Liverite is um, or Liverite. I always say Liverite, but I bet it's Liverite, and you can't see that. Liverite. Um, they're, they're part of W.W. Uh, w. Norton and Company. And then I have a Miracle Man Marvel tote bag, and finally uh, Spencer Hill tote bag over here, which, sorry, you're the most boring of tote bags, but, uh, I also, while I was at BEA, I got a whole bunch of books, and I'm gonna have to move fairly quickly to be able to get to all of them in the amount of time, uh, that I have. So, first off, I actually did buy a couple of books while I was in New York, even though, obviously, I was gonna be getting a bunch of books, and it's kind of a weird time to buy books, but whatever, what can you do? So, I went to Books of Wonder with Jillian and Debbie uh, because Gabby works there and also because I wanted to see Books of Wonder and I bought The Art of Wishing by Lindsay Rebar. I'm glad I got the hardback. I really like this cover. Uh, I bought this because I was going to be seeing her during the week and I wanted to get her to sign the book to me and she did write me a hilarious inscription. And then the second thing I bought at Books of Wonder was Silk Singer, the second book in the Dream Dark series by Lainey Taylor. And I haven't read the first book, actually, and I don't own it. But just a few weeks ago, I was talking with Ellis and Jillian and Meg, and we realized that you really can't buy this anymore because they only released it in hardback, and I doubt it was even a big release. So to buy it online, you'd have to buy a used copy for like 100 bucks, and it was there. At Books of Wonder. So, because apparently they have old copies of things that they just like bring out sometimes. So, both Jillian and I bought that one. And then we, Jillian and I went to Housing Works and I actually bought I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson, which, because I wanted to like help clear up my schedule at BEA because there were a lot of things at the same time and this was one of them. And it did turn out I could have gotten the S and a drop very, very easily, but I don't mind supporting housing works, and I had I'll Give You the Sun for sure and didn't have to worry about it. So for a little less stress, totally worth it. Um, on Wednesday, I got to go to the novel slash uh, Little Brown Young Readers Group brunch, and I got a whole bunch of books there, but uh, they are shipping them to me. They're so nice. Uh, they're supposed to be here on Monday, so they'll be in uh, probably next week's book haul. But I did get one other one that I had carried with me. Um, Faye was nice enough to give this to me, 
While We Run by Karen Healy. This is a finished copy. Uh, this is the sequel to When We Wake, which is about a girl who is cryogenically frozen and wakes up a hundred years later and is like figuring out the world and there's creepy things going on and there's a cute romance and it's diverse and there are tons of Beatles references. So I'm really excited to read the second one. And I'll be reading that fairly soon. Uh, and then I also on Wednesday got to go to the Epic Reads party, which is where I got the Book Shimmy t-shirt. And I got um, some books in the tote bags. So I got Rites of Passage by Joy N. Hensley. And this one basically sounds like Cadet Kelly, if you saw that movie with Hilary Duff, but it's about a girl who goes to uh, military school. And it's hard, but there's going to be a romance. And yeah, it sounds awesome because I kind of loved Cadet Kelly. So, and then there's Anatomy of a Misfit by Andrea Portes. Uh, this one is about the third most popular girl in school who is trying very hard not to get outmaneuvered um, into not being popular anymore. And she's feeling attracted to a loner and she doesn't want to go there because it'll ruin up her social status. And then um, one of my roommates, Andrea, went to the Harlequin High Tea. And she was like, if you want any of these books, you can take them. So I took two. I took I Want It That Way by Anna Gear uh, because I really like Anne's uh, Razorland trilogy. And this is obviously something very different. It's a new adult romance, uh, but also it's a Backstreet Boys title. So I think there's going to be pop culture references. And I was just too curious to not take it, even though I have had the Backstreet Boys stuck in my head for a really long time thanks to this book. Uh, my roommates and I were definitely singing this while we were at BDA. Uh, and then I got Jason Mott's second novel, The Wonder of All Things. I really enjoyed his novel, The Returned. Um, and this one is a similar sort of magical realism kind of deal. It's about a girl who has the power to heal people, um, but it's taking a ta taxing to her. And it sounds really cool. So, and then people, of course, think she's a miracle. And it sounds like it'll be a really interesting, thought-provoking read. Uh, and then on Thursday, when BEA actually started, it started with the Harlequin Breakfast. Uh, and that's uh, that I got Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley. This is really the only book that I wanted um, from them. And this is about uh, the integration era. It's set in 1959, Virginia. And it's about the first black girl to go to this particular school. And then she also falls in love with another girl. So she's sort of dealing with being diverse in a whole lot of ways. Uh, and it sounds amazing. The reports I've been getting from friends like Kat and Ashley Page are that this book is astounding and that it will destroy your feels. So maybe I'll cry. Also, I got, um, thanks to Lenore, I was able to knock one of my big books off because she's an author, so she got to sneak in early, and she grabbed me uh, one of my most desired books, which is Landline by Rainbow Rowell. This is coming out from St. Martin's Press, which is part of Macmillan. And this one is, it sounds like she's actually doing magical realism this time. It's about a woman who is having trouble in her marriage, and she is able to call her husband in the past. So trying to like work through their marriage issues before they happen. So sort of almost time travel-y, but not quite. So I'm curious to see how she pulls that off. From the Room of Secret Arcs, Meg grabbed me a couple um, when she was grabbing things for herself. So she got me Stitching Snow by R.C. Lewis, which is a sci-fi Snow White retelling. And sci-fi fairy tale retellings are my favorite things in the entire world, basically. So I'm super excited about this, even though I really still don't like the cover. And she also grabbed me Jacoby by William Ritter, which is being pitched as Doctor Who meets Sherlock, which I'm not, to be honest, the hugest fan. Well, I haven't seen Sherlock. Presumably I would love Sherlock like everybody else does, but I haven't seen it. And I like Doctor Who, but I don't love Doctor Who. But I do love this cover quite a whole lot, and I am looking forward to trying this book. Maybe it will convince me that I need to go ahead and watch Sherlock. We'll see. Then I got Belle Jar by Meg Wolitzer. This is from Penguin, and it is about a girl whose boyfriend dies, and then she's sent to a therapeutic boarding school in rural Vermont to try to deal with her grief. Um, so that's going to be a real upper, I'm sure. 
Then from Simon & Schuster, they did their early morning drop of Scott Westerfeld's Afterworld. This one is set in the world of publishing, and it's telling, and it's 600 gigantic massive pages. It is telling the story of a girl who is writing a novel, um, soon to be published, YA author, and also the novel that she's writing. So it's two books, basically. That must be why it's so massive. And then I went and I waited in line and I got a signed copy of Rooms by Lauren Oliver. And this one, uh, I really like the arc because it has not quite the final cover, but final cover-ish. And then it has the original one, which I actually really like. And this one is about a family that moves into a house that ha is haunted. And I guess the two lady ghosts like talk to them by like making house noises. I don't know. I'm curious to see how that works out. <laughs> The blurb is a little confusing to me. And then uh, one of another book that I was incredibly excited to get, uh, Mortal Heart by Robin Lefevers. I love this series. And this one is about Anne, who they tried to make into the nun. The Abbey tried to make her into a seeress, but she runs off and does her own thing. because She's like, I want to go have fun like my sisters did. Come on. So exciting. The publicist started talking to me and he's like, do you like books about the Civil War? And I was like, eh. And then he was like, gender bending. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, give me this book. So that is called Never Home by Laird Hunt. And I basically, gender bending, she goes to the war in place of her husband because he's, I guess, not fit to serve in some way. So kind of like Mulan. And from Disney, I picked up, they had a drop for Auditorium, Alistair Gr Grimm's Auditorium by Gregory Fanaro, and this sounds a little bit like a, it's like a portal fantasy, like this kid who is a, he's a chimney sweep, he's cleaning and in, and he goes into this guy Alistair Grimm's trunk, and through it is the auditorium, and then he has to like save the auditorium. Sounds like it could be good. And then there is Falling Into Place by Amy Zhang. Uh, the most popular girl school in school, Liz Emerson, uh, tries to commit suicide, I think, and it's about how it got to that point, which again sounds like a real upper. And then I, The Jewel by Amy Ewing, Ewing, which I was really afraid was a trap because I love this cover, but it reminds me of this collection. So I didn't really think this would be good, but all the reports that I'm getting, uh, Lindsay Rebar said that it is amazing, and Jillian read the first um, couple of chapters, I think, while we were at BA, and she said it was actually really, really good. So now I believe this will be good, but it's about a girl who's purchased at a surrogacy auction, so she's going to have to have this evil duchess's baby, and okay, the baby part kind of scares me, but I am still excited to read this. And I waited in line and got a signed copy of Made for You by Melissa Marr. This is her first, I think, contemporary novel, but it's contemporary-ish because it's about a girl, um, she wakes up in the hospital and now she has the ability to touch people and see how they're going to die. And she ends up having to like track down this murderer and he's trying to like find her because she could catch him and it's this whole thing. So I'm excited because I do enjoy Melissa Marr's books. Uh, and then I picked up a drop of Good Night June by Sarah Gio, Sarah Gio, I don't know, uh, which is about how the book Good Night Moon came to be a fictionalized version of how the book Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown came to be. And that was apparently my favorite book when I was an infant. So, you know, nostalgia and all of that. Not that I really remember being an infant, but hey. Uh, and then could not resist picking up The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare, even though I was trying to resist it. And then they made the cover be under this flap, which is really annoying because look how ugly that is. Erg. Anyway, this is about a boy who is trying, uh, he tries to fail the exam for like the magical academy because of reasons, but he doesn't fail and then he goes to the magisterium. And then Lenore gave me a ticket to uh, BJ Novak's signing of the book with no pictures, which is a picture book with no pictures. Uh, I don't understand the point of this book, but I did have a really awkward encounter with BJ Novak, of which I have a really awkward photo of myself as evidence. I probably won't review it because I honestly don't know how I would review it, but we'll see what happens when I read it. 
Then there is Behind the Scenes by Dahlia Adler. Dahlia Adler is one of my author, author friends, and this was in uh, my bag from the, uh, the author blogger party hosted by Lisa Weimer. Behind the Scenes is about a girl whose best friend is a television star. She ends up getting a job working on the set, and she falls for her friend's romantic lead, but then her friend and the guy are forced to date for publicity reasons and so it's like how they deal with that and whether they can make that through they can make it through that still as friends and also in my bag was Pawn by Amy Carter which is about um, it's another dystopian thing where society stratified and she's a three but she has the option to join another family and become a seven but then there's drama with the um, working against the government and all sorts of things also got a finished copy of Open Road Summer by Emery, Emery Lord, which is a book that I loved and have already reviewed uh, about a girl who is best friends with a country music star and falls in love with someone that is on tour with him, Matt Bench, who was amazing. And then Rachel, Tiger Lily Rachel, gave me, um, she had Stolen Songbird by Danielle L. Jensen in her bag, which is about a girl who's kidnapped by trolls and then becomes kind of sympathetic to their cause because everybody's against the trolls. Uh, what's funny about this is this is a finished copy and the back says that it's for anyone who loved Rachel Hartman's Serafina, but it misspells both Rachel Hartman, it puts two N's on Hartman, and spells Serafina with an F instead of a PH. So whoops, 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 whoops. I also got Penny Royal Academy, Lenore swoops this one up for me, thank you Lenore, by M.A. Larson, which sounds a whole lot like the School for Good and Evil, but I'm hoping this one will not make me angry, but it's a school for knights and princes to learn how to defeat forces of evil. Also picked up Hold the Dark by William Garaldi, this is published by Live Right, Live Right, damn it, anyway, uh, this one is actually, I picked it up because I love the cover and it was about wolves like stealing children or something. But the problem is that William Garaldi is the guy who wrote an article about um, Fifty Shades of Grey and how romance is absolutely terrible even though he's only read one and a half romance novels. And so I'm not reading this book. I'm sorry that I took it, but I didn't realize it until I got home. So I will be getting rid of that because I'm not supporting that guy. Because if he's that narrow-minded, how good can his books be? Uh, also picked up A Sudden Light by Garth Stein. This is a Simon & Schuster adult title. It sounds a bit like rooms and that a family moves into a house and the house is haunted. And from Red Hook, there is Touch by Claire North. This is her second book. It doesn't have a cover yet, so this is a stand-in thing. But it's apparently, it's about pe um, two people who can touch someone and then take over their body. And like one of them is trying to kill the other one, and that they're having trouble finding each other because obviously they're constantly changing bodies. But it sounds really cool, and Ellen of Orbit highly recommended it, and I trust her. So, then also from Ashet, Little Brown Kids, uh, The Map to Everywhere by Carrie Ryan and John Park Davis. I didn't like Carrie Ryan's zombie books, but I am willing to give her another try. And this middle grade has a really cute cover. And it's about two kids who are trying to find this map that goes everywhere so that they can get to where they're going. So one is trying to find his mom and one is trying to get home. And then I picked up Ben Tripp's The Accidental Highwayman, which has these completely gorgeous illustrations and this gorgeous cover. Uh, this is a tour book, um, and it's about a guy and a girl who go on adventures. Um, I think it's a fairy princess and a guy who was mistaken as a highwayman, so that's the accidental highwayman. I also got a signed copy of Jessica Darling's It List to the Totally Not Guaranteed Guide to Friends, Foes, and Faux Friends, which is Jessica Darling in middle school. I also got The Only Thing to Fear by Caroline Tung Richmond. I was alerted that this was there by Marika, um, and I'm very thankful. And this is if uh, this is an alternate history where uh, the Nazis won World War II. Also picked up Random House did a middle grade drop and I grabbed both of those. Frostborn, which is the first book in the Thrones and Bones series, which is inspired by Viking uh, myth, I believe. So that sounds pretty cool. 
Gabriel Finley and The Raven's Riddle by George Hagen. It's got riddles and a kid is going to look for his father and he has a raven. I, I couldn't really make too much out of the blurb on what's actually happening in the book. but And then um, the last things on Friday, I went to three signings. So first I got Love is the Drug. This is coming from Scholastic and it's by Elia Dunn Johnson. And it's um, there's like a plague that breaks out, a deadly flu virus and a girl is involved and things. Again, it was a very intentionally mysterious kind of blur, but, you know, various forces are trying to get her to do things. Uh, then there's The Fun Out of Pretending by Rachel Harris, which is coming out from Spencer Hill Contemporary. These two date. She's trying to become popular and get the most popular guy in school, and so she pretends to date her best friend to try to get rid of her nice girl image a little bit. And I love fake dating as a trope, so excited! And then Breathe Annie Breathe by Miranda Keneally. Miranda Keneally's books are some of my favorites. And this one is about a girl who, um, her boy, she broke up with her boyfriend and then he dies. And so she starts trying to do a marathon like he always wanted to do in his honor. On Saturday, I went to the Bloomsbury Breakfast. So most everything I got on Saturday is Bloomsbury. First, I got Air of Fire. Hell yes. Signed a copy of Air of Fire. So excited. Third book in the Throne of Glass series. Honestly, you should know all about these already, so I will not waste your time. And then I got the Jessica J. George series, Tuesdays at the Castle, Wednesdays in the Tower, and Thursdays with the Crown. And I got to talk to Jessica. She was really, really nice. Um, but apparently this is about Castle Glower, and Castle Glower, kind of like uh, the Hogwarts, like things move around every day and so this girl's been like tracking how her house moves how the castle moves and that's going to be important because reasons i also got the bone season which has the tiniest little description but i think it's a really complex book so i can't really tell you what it's about but i've heard very mixed things and i really hope that i will love it i'll be reading it pretty soon i know debbie absolutely loves this one so I'm not sure if it was a shippy book. We usually agree on shippy books. So hopefully it is, and then I'll probably like it. And they also let me take an arc of Take Back the Skies by Lucy Saxon. This is out now. Uh, I read it and have reviewed it already. I liked it, but I think that it would be better marketed as a middle grade. Um, and it had, it had a lot of problems, but it was also enjoyable. Uh, the Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennett, and thank you to Jillian and Debbie who grabbed this one for me since I did not go to BookCon, and I'm glad I did not go to BookCon, uh, but obviously this is based on the Lizzie Bennett Diaries video series, and it is really fun. I mean, obviously a lot of it is repetition, but there's also uh, little new tidbits to show just how much thought they put into it, and there's some awesome moments with Mr. Bennett and Lizzie because I love their dynamic. And I'll probably be rereading this soon because the audiobook is narrated by Ashley Clements and I need that in my life. And then from my friend Lenore, she gave me an arc of Chasing Before, which is the sequel to The Memory of After or Level 2. Um, obviously, I really like Level 2, so I am excited to find out how things turn out in the second book. Um, after the dramatic events of the conclusion of book one. And then uh, Jen, body book blog Jen, was one of my roommates, and she was abandoning Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. And I really, really love Alan Cumming, so I grabbed it. Thanks, Jen. And then Steph of Cuddlebuggery gave me uh, from her bag at the other blogger party, she gave me Nantucket Ride because she hasn't read the first one. And I am curious to find out if I like if Cricket grows more and stops shaming everybody for everything in Nantucket Red. So that is my BEA book haul, and I should probably go now. But thank you for sitting through this really long video. Bye!